Florida's new gun law takes effect and juvenile delinquency explodes in the state. On today's video, while it's still very preliminary, we're getting an idea of the effects of Florida's new gun laws that were changed by the governor and the effect that they're having on the state already. Florida's new gun law gets rid of the concealed carry permit, which was something like a class that people would take to teach them safety. Now, there are more guns being purchased in Florida than ever. Many people who wanted to conceal carry but they didn't want to get the class, the safety course, are now purchasing guns in Florida, which means that there's been an increased amount of gun sales in the state. At the same time, the number of people that are taking the safety courses have plummeted, somewhere to about 5,000 people a month, about a quarter of the amount previously. To have an idea, in August of 2023, about 5,000 people applied for the concealed carry permit, whereas before, in the two previous years, that number would surpass 20,000. Gun sales have also increased, thus you have more guns on the street and you also have less people taking safety courses. Now to give you some general context of gun laws in other states and how they affect safety, the most dangerous states in the United States are in this order, Mississippi, Louisiana, New Mexico, Alabama, Wyoming, Alaska, Montana, Arkansas, Missouri, Tennessee, South Carolina, Oklahoma. That is the mortality rate by firearm, which does not exactly equate to homicide. So it's just you have an idea, states like Wyoming, for example, have extraordinarily high numbers of people being injured and dying from gunshots, but it's not considered a homicide. We're talking states like Wyoming, where the homicide rate is low, but the firearm mortality rate is 26 per 100,000, which is higher than the homicide rate in Mississippi, which means that in general, you could assume that somebody's more likely in Wyoming to be injured accidentally by a weapon than to be murdered in Mississippi, the most dangerous state. So accidental discharge or self-inflicted injuries actually account for more deaths than homicides. Mississippi's firearm mortality rate is the highest in the nation at 33 per 100,000. Wyoming's is 26 per 100,000. The fifth highest in the nation in a state that has a very insignificant and low homicide rate which goes to show that states that have a lot of guns but very low homicide rates, like Wyoming, still have a lot of firearm mortalities, much more significant than homicides. And that just goes to show that in a state like Wyoming, if you have more guns, you have more gun deaths, even if they're not by homicide. On the other side of the spectrum, the states with the lowest number of mortalities by gunfire are Massachusetts, Hawaii, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire, and California. The highest rate being California at 9, the lowest being Massachusetts at 3.4. Very low. By homicide rate, Mississippi is the highest at 23, followed by Louisiana, Alabama, South Carolina, Missouri, Illinois, Maryland, Tennessee, and Arkansas. Now, by homicide rate, the safest state is Maine at 1.7, followed by Idaho, Massachusetts, Hawaii, Utah, Iowa, North Dakota, Nebraska, Rhode Island, Minnesota, and Montana. Interestingly, Montana has a low homicide rate and a high firearm mortality rate. Now let's look at these correlations. This is gun ownership by state. Number one is Montana at 66% of population, followed by Wyoming, Alaska, Idaho, West Virginia, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, South Dakota, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Kentucky. The states with the lowest percentage of gun ownership are New Jersey, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Hawaii, New York. So when you go over these analytics and you compare gun ownership, homicide rates, and firearm mortality rates, what stands out the most is that states like New Jersey, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Hawaii that have low percentages of gun ownership are also the states that have the lowest firearm mortality rate. States like Wyoming and Montana with high gun ownership may not have homicide rates, but they have accidental shootings and they also have a ridiculous percentage of self-inflicted injuries. So if you were looking to make your state a safer place, you would look at the loss of states like Maine, Idaho, Massachusetts, Hawaii, 
Utah, Iowa, North Dakota, because they have the lowest homicide rates. You could also say you want to stay away from laws like those in Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, South Carolina, because those are states that have very high percentages of people being killed by homicide as well. The states with the lowest percentage of people being hurt by firearms in general are states like Massachusetts, Hawaii, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire, and California. So these are analytics. These are real numbers. What I like about these analytics we're talking about today, homicide rates cannot be faked. Firearm mortalities cannot be faked because when somebody dies by gunshot, it has to be investigated. And the percentage of gun ownership by state is somewhat accurate with the fact that I lived in Alabama and I can tell you that most convicted felons in that state are armed, which is a scary notion. For example, when I lived in Alabama, both of my neighbors next door were convicted felons and both of them had arms. Neither one of them were legally supposed to have them, but they had them. Law enforcement knew that they had them and they didn't care because they are pro-gun, even if it means letting criminals who have felonies be armed. In other words, law enforcement weighs the options and they want criminals to be armed because they know that they're armed and they do nothing about it. Well, for one, most of these law enforcement officers are not going to go try to disarm a armed felon when they know the consequences that the criminals face. And why are those criminals taking the risk? Well, the criminals are taking the risk for a few reasons. In the state of Alabama, for example, they take the risk because they know how dangerous it is to live in that state. And if they don't have a weapon, basically, when everybody else is armed, you have to be armed as well. So now let's go back to the state of Florida. The state of Florida didn't fall into either one of these extremes. It wasn't a very restrictive state like Massachusetts or California or New York. And it wasn't a murderous state like Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. Florida was kind of a middle ground state with laws that allowed your rights to carry. But it was also a state that required you to take a class to have a permit. Thus, Florida was the safest state in the South. Surrounded by states that are dangerous, the state of Florida managed to have a relatively low homicide rate for the region. Now, if you were making laws to make your state a safer place, you would look at the states like Massachusetts, California, New York, Rhode Island, Hawaii, see what they are doing, and clearly, if you want to make your state a more dangerous place, follow the lead of Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. What does the state of Florida do? The state of Florida starts to mirror its laws more towards states like Louisiana, Mississippi, states that are very dangerous and murderous. So it's no surprise that we're starting to see an increase in homicides in Florida. But Florida is endemically different than these states in the Deep South for a few reasons. Florida is notorious for home invasion robberies, and the youth in Florida is always looking to get their hands on guns. Thus, in the state of Florida, the law has actually created a situation where we are now seeing an increased amount of juvenile delinquency. We're talking auto break-ins to get a hold of guns. Now, before in the state of Florida, most people who had guns and were open carrying would have had to take the safety course. They would know things like not leaving a gun in a vehicle, but these new people who are getting guns in Florida are not taking any safety courses because they're not required by law anymore. Among people being arrested in Hillsborough County, Florida, we're not talking law-abiding citizens, we're talking people being arrested. Intake has shown that the amount of guns on the street among criminals is now more than twice what it was two years ago. And the answer to that is simple. People that are criminals in the streets are now afraid that because there are more guns in the air, that they also have to be armed. And many criminals in the Tampa area who before were not armed are armed now because other people are armed and the group that is predominantly making up these numbers is people that are almost not old enough to have guns because despite the fact you have to be 18 or 21 in most states to get a hold of a handgun most people start to delinquent at around the age of 15 or 16 which means that now in the state of florida where there are more guns and more people armed more juveniles are finding themselves the need to arm themselves. So let's take a look at a few news articles from this week in the Tampa area. A young man, 15 years old, was arrested for manslaughter with a firearm. 15 years old, manslaughter with a firearm in the community of Ruskin in Hillsborough County. 
He said it was an accident, but the investigators discovered that it wasn't an accident. Just the day before, in Tampa, a 17-year-old suspect, again, not old enough to legally possess a gun, in broad daylight at 4 in the afternoon, hurt four people in downtown, shutting down the entire city because a group of juveniles got into a dispute, leading to three innocent bystanders being shot in broad daylight in downtown Tampa. Is this the first time that this has happened in Tampa since the implementation of this new law? No, if you guys remember, in Ybor City, a similar incident occurred where individuals, mostly minors, had guns on them, and they ended up in a shootout in Ybor City. Now, this was labeled a mass event, but it wasn't a mass event. It was a gang rivalry shooting that left a 20-year-old dead, a 14-year-old boy, and 16 others were injured. Three suspects have been arrested, and they believe that another suspect is at large. One of the shooters arrested was 14 years old, but his friend was 21. Which just goes to show that when people are minors and they're delinquent, they're going to get guns from their older friends. And thus, when they go to downtown or Ybor City, packed areas where a lot of people go to, shootouts take place because these young delinquents are armed. Interestingly enough, both Ybor City and downtown Tampa are now becoming ghost towns because people are afraid to go out for an evening if the potential for a gang shootout where 16 innocent people hurt. Couple months later, four people in broad daylight as well. These are innocent bystanders eating in front of restaurants and stuff like that in bars. People are now afraid of going out in Tampa because of the increase in juvenile delinquency, in particular, weapons, juveniles mixing for violence. Just last month in Bradenton, Florida, a 16 year old was killed. A 17 year old was arrested for the shooting, labeled a, again, manslaughter case now we could go on and on relating recent cases of juveniles and people that are not old enough to have a gun yet being involved in deadly shootings in the state of florida but there isn't enough time on today's video what we are starting to see in the state of florida is that now people from 14 to 17 are getting their hands on guns because they feel because other people are armed now they have to be armed and Usually, young people and weapons don't mix very well. And while it is still preliminary, we don't have analytics, I do predict that the state of Florida will see an increase in the homicide rate, landing somewhere between 8.4 to 11.2 in the next year, putting Florida out of the title of the safest state in the South. When a state already has good gun laws, there's no reason to add more guns into the mix. And unfortunately, in the state of Florida, the word on the street is other people are armed, so now you have to be armed. And many of the people arming themselves, just a few months into the implementation of this law, we are already starting to see an alarming number of juvenile offenders being arrested on weapon-related charges, something that happened in the state of Florida in the past, but now those types of crimes are happening more often, leading to more innocent bystanders, and thus, the state of Florida is definitely not a safer place. At least the people in the city of Tampa are starting to see that this law is having a very detrimental effect on crime in the metropolitan area. Now, that Friday night that there was a shooting in Bradenton, me and the wife were out having dinner, and we saw teenagers with guns running from the scene. See, what had happened that night is that there was a lot of kids getting together and a lot of them had guns and many things popped off in many different places and unfortunately one of them 16 year old was lost now my entire 20 years living in florida i have never seen teenagers running with guns maybe once or twice in broward county but i've never seen it outside of broward county but now here we are having dinner in the tampa metropolitan area and there's kids running by with guns fleeing a shooting that's not normal in Florida, and it's clearly because of this new law. Many people mistakenly believe that more guns equal more safety, and many law enforcement agencies preach that because the more guns other people have, the less danger the police forces have to put themselves in because things resolve themselves without their assistance. Basically, 
When there's guns involved, police officers are sometimes afraid of getting involved and thus they don't have to put their lives in danger. So it makes sense for law enforcement to want that. It doesn't take a genius to figure out if somebody wants to be a hero, go ahead and be a hero because law enforcement officers don't want to have to put their lives on the line every single day for a paycheck. That's common sense. If you want to be a hero, go right ahead. Most police officers don't want to put their lives in danger on a daily basis. It just isn't worth it for a paycheck. After all, you're going to be held as a hero, but if they're the ones that have to do it, well, then they get put under the spotlight. And in the state of Florida, we've had cases where that exactly has happened. And most law enforcement officers in Florida just don't want to be in that situation. Again, deferring the responsibility of safety from the hands of law enforcement into the public hands. Again, if you want to be a hero, go ahead and be a hero. Me, I'm calling the cops. I don't own my house. I don't care if somebody breaks in here. I have insurance for that. Uh, my vehicle, I wish somebody would take that thing away. The car payment's killing me right now. It's $1,200 a month for that pickup truck. So I'm personally not in a position to defend other people's property. I mean, not, I'm not willing to defend my own property, let alone somebody else's. But uh, if somebody wants to be a hero, then go right ahead. That's kind of what these laws are intended to do, is to defer that danger and responsibility from law enforcement where they can be scrutinized and put it on a civilian where he could be claimed as a hero. But again, this is all preliminary. We're going to have to see what the homicide rate over the next two years in the Florida is going to actually look like. But for the meantime, we're just looking at these news reports and we are wondering what the crap is happening in the state of Florida.